Welcome back in, folks, to Believe in Rams. This is episode 138. I'm Jake Ellenbogen, joined here as always by my co-host Cameron Lynch, former Rams linebacker. And uh, we are going to try to get you ready for the Rams and Chiefs game because whether you like it or not, it's probably going to be on TV where you're located. It's about 98% nationally televised, Cam. So I think people are going to see it whether they want to or not. Uh, before, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, before we get into it, be sure to subscribe, like, rate, review, view, comment, all that jazz on all your podcast platforms, whether that be YouTube or uh, Spotify or Apple Podcasts, whatever, you, wherever you're listening to this. Um, but let's let's dive into this little ad read I have here. Uh, basketball is back. Bet online remains your number one source for all sports betting needs this season. You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends at Bet Online. And as your continued source for all sports wagering information, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports and events, whether it's NFL, NBA, NHL, MMA, tennis, boxing, or even golf. Head on over to betonline.ag to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, to receive your rewards. Bet online where the game starts. So Cam... Now we are ready. We're we're here. I, I know there Let's there are people roll. like really <laughs> you're gonna you're you're gonna actually try to break this game down. I mean, who was even on this team? I think it's twenty four guys. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, twenty four guys on the fifty three man roster that have stayed on fifty three man roster the whole year. Uh, yikes! So uh, the burning question we're gonna start off, Cam. What is Bryce Perkins' ceiling as a starter for the Rams if he indeed? starts not only this game but the rest of the year ah ceiling i don't want to put ceilings on anyone right so bryce perkins as long as he stays healthy i think that's the ceiling that's really been the ceiling for all of rams quarterbacks essentially is can these guys stay healthy um you know as a defensive player you know our (laughs) as a defensive player our thought process a lot of times is what does the backup look like right and so you got bryce perkins Who's his backup? What does that look like? Got Kukas coming in. I know the Rams just brought him in. I know he's coming from the US, USFL. Uh, he has a big injury history as well. And so health is the most important thing, not only for Bryce Perkins, but just for the Rams organiza- organization. Having healthy quarterbacks will be the ceiling. Whether they can keep those guys healthy or not will determine how they finish strong on the season. We've been talking about that every podcast. If you listen back, for the Rams fans that have been listening, Chiefs fans, Saints fans, whatever fan fan you are, health of the quarterback is the most prominent and the most important item in this game of football right now. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, we are getting into the thick of things. This uh, this is week twelve. Um, you know, here, here's the facts. Okay. The Chiefs have a game to win. We know that. But the Chiefs also have to protect Patrick Mahomes as well, which we'll we'll get into. Uh, The Rams offense ranks 25th in DVOA. That might surprise some people that they're not worse than that. But I do think the last couple games has kind of boosted them up a little bit uh, in that department. The Chiefs defense ranks 22nd. So going into this game, Cam, uh, I think Bryce Perkins is going to start. He's had the whole week of first-team offensive reps. I know that Sean McVay is kind of like alluding to the idea. We haven't decided. No, you have. You're, 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 it's a little gamesmanship by the coach. I mean, he's just, it's coach speak. Like he's trying to get, you know, the other team in their head. What do we prepare for? What kind of player are we going to get? Because uh, Wolford is mobile. Bryce Perkins is actually a running quarterback. He can run. He can make plays uh, consistently with his legs. Uh, then you have the likely seventh round rookie AJR Curry starting at left tackle. I'm very excited for that. Uh, he blocked at right tackle at Michigan State, helped carve out a bunch of lanes in the run game uh, for Kenneth Walker. Uh, so this is somebody that, you know, I think could definitely help you in the run game. Um, but, you know, pass, you know, is he going to be good in pass pro? That That's a big thing. Or is he going to be able to protect, uh, you know, Bryce Perkins blindside if he starts at left tackle, which it looks like he might. Uh, hoping to see more of Tutu Atwell. Hoping to see more of Lance McCutcheon and Jacob Harris. To me, 
you're in this this situation. You don't throw the towel in because the season is not over mathematically. Until it's over mathematically, like you have a 0.6% chance of making the playoffs. But believe it or not, I know a lot of people were rooting for the Lions, me included. Uh, that was probably the best of all worlds for the Rams. Okay, The Vikings already have that division on lockdown. So it's not like you had to root for the Patriots. The Vikings already have that division on lockdown. Then the Giants and Dallas game, that didn't really matter. One of those teams was going to lose, and that helps out the Rams uh, just by virtue of schedule. Uh, but if we're really diving deep into it, the Lions' loss still somewhat keeps the Rams alive. Because uh, they do have more wins than the Lions, or the, the Lions have more wins than the Rams. So that's something there, Cam, that I was thinking about. And I'm like, man, I don't want them to lose. But I was like, if the Rams have any shot of some Kurt Warner magic out of Bryce Perkins, I, I mean, you got to actually, you, you, I don't know, you got to, you got to hope, right? I mean, obviously, yeah. if you've already assumed that the game, you know, the game's over, the season's over, all that, fine. Uh, but, you know, I think you still, you can't throw in the towel, but you also got to give these young guys an opportunity, find a healthy balance. Yeah, like you said, give the young guys opportunity and also prepare for next year. I think we talked about in the last podcast, the guys are playing now for next year. Is Aaron Donald, is he going to want to come back to a team that just throws in the towel? I don't think so. And so it, attracting free agents, that's going to be extremely important, how the Rams finish. And, and so we talk about, we talk about the, uh, we talk about uh, the Chiefs. Talk about the Chiefs at the end of the day. That's like, you know, it's like the David versus Goliath. You know, the Rams and the Chiefs have, um, sorry, the, the Rams and the Chiefs have a history uh, with, with prior games, great games. Um, I know the Chargers and the Chiefs played last week. The Chargers pressure Patrick, Patrick Mahomes. So I'm excited to jump into this breakdown because I see some of the notes that we have not to pressure the Chiefs. I don't know, but from when I watched the football game last week, the Chargers and the Chiefs, the Chargers came after Patrick Mahomes, and he was in trouble that first half. And so I'm curious to see, you know, when it comes to the Rams, bend, don't break defense, what that looks like. If if the Rams sit back this game like they get, did against the Saints with Andy Dalton being able to pick them apart uh, come in the second half, I think Patrick Mahomes would do the same thing. So attacking Patrick Mahomes, double-teaming Travis Kelsey. It was funny. I was watching the game. At the end of the game, I was like – Double team Travis Kelsey. The guy had a he, the guy had three touchdowns la- that game against the Chargers, right? Like hat trick. Double team him. Pressure Patrick Mahomes. Those are my takeaways uh, when it comes to playing. Uh, when it comes to playing the Chiefs, and then also too, we talk about some of those takeaways. Take the ball away. That's another takeaway, right? Really? It's have takeaways. I think the Chargers did a great job of taking the ball away from the Chiefs a little bit that game, and so the Rams need to do that this game. Get some interceptions, get some turnovers, because if not, Perkins, you're gonna see, you're gonna see Kooks, you're gonna see maybe a Riley Dixon. Riley Dixon played quarterback in, in high school. If you didn't know that, he played quarterback a couple of times for Syracuse football. So he's the back, he's the punter uh for the Rams. And so if you could bring him in and play quarterback, you know, we'll see. But at the end of the day, helping out the Rams offense by getting turnovers for the, you know, from the Chiefs is gonna be extremely important. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, without a doubt. I think, you know, it Cam, it all starts with running the football, though. We, we all know that. I mean, we've been talking about that. Uh, for whatever reason, they cut Daryl Henderson. I still disagree with it. But uh, it's time to make Kyron Williams the feature back, not Cam mm-hmm. Akers. Akers was good, not great. I noticed when he has a good game, everyone acts like he had a great game. When Henderson had a great game, it's a good game. You know, that whole thing. Look, it's okay. He was a second-round pick. He's the highest pick in the last five years. But when I watch uh, Kyron Williams, he's just a better runner. He, you know, he had six yards per carry last week, you know, uh, or five yards per carry last week. Akers averaged 4.4. Um, <clears throat> I think it's time to get Kyron involved. Uh, that's not throwing in the towel. I think he's the better running back right now. I, I think, you know, he's the guy that can get that can bring more to the table. He can definitely help you out in pass pro. Uh, you know, I think he makes the most sense to keep him going Two two at well, you know, get the explosive plays going. Bryce Perkins can't throw the deep ball. He can't. Uh, you know, it's not going to be a Stafford ball, but he can throw it. And, and I think, you know, if, if you try early on to maybe take that deep shot, Kansas City's defense, I think, is susceptible to getting burned over the top. Uh, I think LeJerry Sneed is a very good corner that they got, as well as Trent McDuffie, a young corner there, and Joshua Williams. But it's a young secondary. You have Legereus Sneed, who's a fourth round pick in 2020. Those guys were just drafted. McDuffie being in the first round and jo- uh, Joshua Williams being in the fourth. And then you have Justin Reed, who is a stud safety 
but they lost Juan Thornhill. So it's going to be between guys like Brian Cook and Deion Bush. Uh, Brian Cook is another rookie. So this is a very young secondary that I think the Rams could take advantage of with the deep ball. Uh, In addition to that, Bryce Perkins has a lot of experience in the preseason throwing to Lance McCutcheon, who actually caught a couple deep balls, including one where he had to completely change the course direction of his body, turn around, jump over uh, the, you know, L.A. Chargers defensive back and pluck the ball out of the air while basically being on his back, take it off his back and run for a touchdown. So this guy has made plays uh, we'll see, you know, if we see number, uh, I believe he's 82 or 86. I don't remember what he's wearing. The clutching. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, we they get, they got to get him involved. I think, you know, I, at least I think so. Um, and then, you know, obviously at well, but also I want to see Jacob Harris. I mean, does this guy even need a roster spot at this point? Like, that's the thing. Like you have to figure this out because you sign him the active roster. Is he a tight end? Is he a wide receiver? What is he? Um, and then in addition to that, Bryson Hopkins as well, who I mentioned. Now, with the defensive side, Cam, the the thing is, I'm not against pressuring Patrick Mahomes. Um, what I'm against is blitzing him. It, it's kind of the same thing as Matthew Stafford. If you look at Stafford's numbers against the blitz, he roasts it. But when teams were not blitzing Matthew Stafford and they're just getting pressure on three and four man rushes, that puts a lot of pressure because now you have that extra guy back. He's in coverage. And I think Mahomes has definitely evolved. I'll say this as controversial as they, this may sound. I thought Mahomes got very cocky and arrogant as a football player, not as a person, but as a football player, the way he used to throw the ball and everything last year. And I think that's why they weren't in the Super Bowl. I think he kind of took a step back. In a sense, he got very casual with the football, the no look passes that don't even make any sort of sense. Um, and now I feel like Josh Allen's doing that. So I feel like there's been a little bit of a changing of the guard where I thought Josh Allen coming in this year was the best quarterback in football. And now I feel like Patrick Mahomes has clearly taken that that mantle over again. And now Josh Allen's in that I'm going to put the team on my back and be, you know, cocky, arrogant and flashy on the field. And I feel like Mahomes has settled down. Yeah, and they have to challenge themselves too, right? Like at some point when you pass a certain skill level, Jake, you know, yeah. it's like, all right, let's see how far I can go. And, and to your point, Patrick Mahomes, he does have Travis, Travis Kelsey. Travis, they're looking like that Brady and Gronk combination right now. Like the yeah, way they're right. playing, the way that they're connecting, it, it's kind of unbelievable to see. Like they can get even better. Like that's kind of mind-blowing. And so for the Rams – keeping Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey off the football field will be their best bet. Kind of playing like that Patriots football, slow, methodical, run out the clock. And like we talked about, run out the clock, run the football to keep them off the football field. I mean, going back to the defensive side, to your point, maybe not always blitzing, but causing that pressure, right? Getting home. Leonard Floyd doing a great job of applying pressure this week uh, or the last week uh, against the Saints. And then Aaron Donald, of course, coming up big uh, in, in big games. And so that's something I would like to see as well. Aaron Donald, you know, we, we talk about Aaron Donald being that heralded GOAT, essentially, but I would love to see him some strip sacks, some big plays. Uh, I know I've talked about, you know, your Bobby Wagner making big plays, big turnovers. I know Jalen Ramsey wanting him to, you know, force turnovers turnovers as well but it's about that time for Aaron Donald you know for for those big plays that come through and so keeping Patrick Mahomes off the football field I think is gonna be extremely important uh forcing turnovers that's gonna be big for the Rams defense this game yeah I absolutely agree with that I mean you know you got to be able to get home and whether they play some men don't break to you know kind of you know elude the fact that let's be honest here uh, this is the best offense in football. They're number one in DVOA. They're explosive as all hell. Um, and a big reason for that is because of Patrick Mahomes. A big reason for that is because of Travis Kelsey. They've also gotten really good contributions in between the numbers. You know, guys like Juju Smith-Schuster, Justin Watson has stepped up, a former uh, Penn U wide receiver. Uh, yeah, one you know, of my former teammates him. as well. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Yeah. yeah, so Watson stepped up. Um, I think I interviewed him at the senior bowl years ago and uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling that speed, you know, you always have to worry about that speed over the top sky Moore, the rookie, uh, you know, second round pick. He's somebody I could see getting some run in this game, even though it's sacrilege for a wide receiver to ever wear numbers in the Uh, (laughs) twenties. I'll let it, I'll I'll let it pass in this show, but God. Um, And then uh, Kadarius, Tony, 
is out and so is Nicole Hardman. So there's a huge opportunity here for these receivers, especially, you know, Justin Watson, um, fast receiver, tall, you know, he, he's a willing blocker. Uh, Marquez Valdez scaling is all speed. Not really a guy that's going to, you know, bring a ton to the table, except he's going to beat you over the top. Uh, Juju kind of does it all. Like he can run every route in the book. And then Sky Moore is another guy that kind of does it all. Um, and don't, Still forget, young, don't forget but, Pacheco, too. The running back Pacheco for the oh, Chiefs. I, I was not pr- pr- uh, forgetting good, Pacheco. He's, good. he's very good. Uh, it's, you know, when he was drafted, I was like, oh, boy. They just they just got an a absolute steal out of Rutgers. Um, Pacheco should have always been starting. Clyde edwards Alaire can't stay healthy, and I don't think at his best he's better than Pacheco. So I like that he's starting. Um, he's wearing number 10. He's got the dreads kind of looking a little bit like Tyreek. <laughs> Yeah. A little bit. Um, you know, Jer- very, very explosive. Uh, Jarek McKinnon is another guy that can help you in the passing game. And then Ronald Jones, I don't know if he's ever going to play for this team, but I think he could really help them. We've talked about him on the podcast. Now, you know, the Rams probably could have been a team that would have gone after him if he was released. That never happened. Unfortunately, he wanted to be. Never happened. Uh, he might not want to be now, even though he's not playing. Uh, he might be winning a ring. So I, I don't know if I'm <laughs> I'm getting out of that. Yeah. Um, you know, you got guys like Noah Gray and Jody Fortson, who they also use at the tight end spot. But uh, I really want to key in on Isaiah Pacheco. You brought him up. Very explosive player. Um, he's not like super, super fast either. Like, I don't think he ran like a ridiculous 40 time, uh, but he's, he makes guys miss, breaks tackles, you know, slips out of tackles, uh, can help you in the passing game. Uh, they were talking about him, you know, being a legit receiver at one point. Uh, so, you know, this is a guy that, you know, I think really brought some life to this running back room. And he's the, the, the return man, too. He's the return yeah. man, too. And that, you know, for me playing back in the day, right, not too long ago, but the return man playing running back, like, that's that's dangerous. That that means they have yeah. true, true speed. And a lot of time, you know, you look at that 40, like, oh, they didn't run that fast. But if, if, often, if a special teams coordinator trusts someone to be the return man, best believe they have wheels. Best believe they can turn it on, you know, when the game, when the game is cut on between those white lines, best believe they can go for sure. And also it's game speed versus like athletic, like testing speed. I think it's completely different. You run naturally when you're doing, you're running in a game, uh, running out of sprinter stance, you'll never be doing in the NFL, which is why I almost kind of find it silly. It seems like they should have you go full speed and then time you when you get to a certain point in that run. And then you like, I don't know why they have you in a sprinter stance. It seems kind of odd um, because no one's going to run that way. Uh, As far as the Chiefs go, I really do think that, you know, the thing that I worry about the most is not necessarily Patrick Mahomes because that's already something that, like, that's built in, right? You you already worry about that. Even if you have the best defense in the league, Mahomes can beat you. But what I worry is the recent injury of A. Sean Robinson. Um, He tore his meniscus, and for those of you who don't know, he has been outstanding in the run defense department and now he's out and i feel like this is probably a bad uh a bad matchup down with him out i really like marquise copeland but just having that giant body in the trenches like that uh i think pacheco might be able to have a decent game against this team because i know that like you look at alvin kamara last week he had some runs where you know he did some things but The Rams kind of held him in check. You know, they used him more in the passing game to get him out like we talked about that they would. Um, But they didn't he didn't dominate them. And and I thought, you know, really, they've done a nice job against the run all year. And, you know, I think they could do it again. But it's going to be a serious test without, you know, a Sean Robinson. And he does not get enough credit. I don't necessarily know if he'll be back uh, after the year. Um, But he's a damn good run defender. And, you know, this is one of those things where. Guys who, you know, you kind of took for granted throughout the year, you know, they're going to start holding their, they're going to start showing their weight. And, and, you know, even when they're like, they're not on the field, you'll start to see things start to kind of crumble a little bit. Hopefully that's not the case, but if this is the game where Pacheco has a hundred yards, I won't be shocked. 
Yeah, and, and, and the Chiefs are smart. They would go back to that Panthers game against Christian McCaffrey, what he did against the Rams. If anyone's smart, if the Saints are smart, I, you would think they would do some of those similar similar plays. But Pacheco, I feel like, has a speed like Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey, return punts, return kickoffs. So they're, they're both dynamic athletes. And so if the Chiefs use him like they did, like the Panthers did, Christian McCaffrey, the, the Rams could be in some trouble. So going back and watching that film and saying, hey, let's correct some of these mistakes, you know, on the edge. Uh, the corners kind of gave up that anchor. Some of the defensive linemen gave up that anchor because the Panthers were able to stretch the stress the line of scrimmage for, for the Rams. So I think coming up with a different game plan. And then also, like you mentioned, uh, Patrick Mahomes, he's going to bring his own piece to the game. But take it one step further, the coaches, Andy Reid, you know, just that that coaching staff, that Hall of Fame coaching staff that the Chiefs have, the Rams are going to have to come <laughs> everything, offense, defense, special teams, and coaches, the cooks, the chefs, you know, the security, everyone's going to have to have their, their best week this week to beat the Chiefs. I mean, literally everybody's going to have to be on their, their P's and Q's this week because – you know, if not, the, the Rams are in trouble. I know you mentioned a 6% uh, chance to possibly make the playoffs, right? Like, you know, this game, this game against the Chiefs is going to deter this could the Chiefs are going to be in the Super Bowl, like possibly. Let's just put it down there right now. Yeah. Bills, Chiefs, whatever that looks like. So this is going to show the Rams, hey, how are we matching up against the best in the world? What does that look like? Are we going to be double teaming Travis Kelsey? Or are we going to sit back and play Bendo break and allow him to chew us up, right? Like, what is that going to look like? And so for Raheem, Raheem Morris, he's going to have to pl- call his his best calls this week. Uh, Sean McVay going to have to call his best calls this week because this is the best team in the NFL. Yeah, and you know, desperate teams are dangerous, but the Rams have just never really felt dangerous at all at this point this season. Um, <clears throat> it, it, it is interesting because if they were ever going to win a game, I would assume it would be this one, the one that no one expects them to win. Even I'm probably not going to pick them to win. Um the season's over if they lose this. Like they have a 0.6% chance right now. If they go four and eight or a three and eight or whatever, the season's over. Um, X factors for this one, Cam, for, for Rams, Chiefs on each side of the ball. I'm going to start off uh, with the Rams offense. I, I mean, I'll be honest. I think a big X factor in this one's Kyron Williams. I think it's really going to be based on how well he can run the ball, how much they can use him in the passing game. You got to be able to keep up with their scoring because you have to assume the defense, they got off to a great start last game, first half, they folded in the second. You have to assume that they're not even going to be good in the first half. You need to score every single time you touch the ball. And so I think the best way to do that is keep Kyron Williams on the field allow him to get going in the run game, allow him to get going in the receiving game, open up the deep ball uh, after that, because now they have to come in and, you know, now they're not playing back as much. Uh, you have to basically, at over the course of the game, there has to be a process of, you know, making the Chiefs respect your wide receivers, respect your passing attack, respect the fact that, look, Bryce Perkins isn't just going to run all over you. He'll throw over you, too. He made a really nice throw to Tyler Higby over the seam. That was a hell of a pass. The the placement on that, I think he's going to have a couple of those wow throws in this one. I also think he's going to run a lot in this game. Uh, but it starts with uh, Kyron Williams, the defense for the Rams. I'm going to say this right now. I don't know if he's going to play, but I think... If he does play, if he does get an opportunity, I think there's a big, big gash opportunity for Patrick Mahomes in the deep secondary with the safeties. I'm hoping Russ Yeast plays. I've seen some good things out of him. He's been outstanding on special teams. Uh, He needs to take over for Taylor Rapp's stat, like 100%. And I think he's an X factor because if Patrick Mahomes wants to test deep down the field, uh, and Taylor Raps down there in coverage number twenty four game over. Uh, it's a touchdown. <laughs> but why are you doing like that? <laughs> if if number twenty one, well, we saw it last week. But if number twenty one is down there in Russ East, the rookie. That's right. I'm putting a lot of pressure on this rookie. But he's got the speed. He's got you know the the ball skills. You know, you go back, you look at him in college. I think he can come down with an interception, a game changing interception there. Um, I just think you have that speed over the top, the cover ability, can play safety, can play corner. I, I think Russ East is is going to be an, an X factor in this one, assuming he plays. And I don't know how you looked at the tape and game plan this week, not making a change in the secondary. Uh, if he's not playing, I, I don't know what's going on. Uh, so that's what I'll say there. And then the 
um, for the Chiefs, the offense. This one's tough. I, 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 I'll give you Pacheco because I feel like you want to you say Pacheco. So I'll <laughs> yeah. give that to you. Appreciate that. I got you. We know each other uh, pretty well by now. Uh, so I'm going to say Juju Smith-Schuster because people do not look at Juju like he's a superstar. Okay, they look at Juju like he's just another guy. But Juju blocks extremely well. Juju is great, you know, yards after the catch. Juju can help you downfield. Again, game speed versus how well he tested at the combine. He's definitely a faster player than he was testing. And then Juju can also help you in between the numbers, take the the ball, you know, over the middle, take that big catch on third down and not be afraid to get pounded over the middle. That is the thing about Juju Smith-Schuster that I love so much and why he was such a valuable member of the Pittsburgh Steelers when he was over there. Now he's with Patrick Mahomes. So I, I just think that that's a big thing there. And then the defensive side for the Chiefs, I'm going to say it right now. Uh, Legereus Sneed is an absolute freak show. Uh, he's a great tackling corner. He can help you as far as if you need a big time interception, he can get that for you. Going up against a, uh, let's call it like it is, you know, Perkins has been around the block for a little bit, but he's technically like playing a rookie, right? Because he hasn't had a lot of experience. Legereus Sneed has a chance to really break open this game. A pick six and you get a guy in a really bad mindset, right? So I feel like he is the X factor here. Um, you know, Legereus need uh, looked for him number 38 on the, the defensive side of the ball for the Chiefs. Okay, so going to the Chiefs defense, so I'll go immediately to the Rams offense. I'm going to go Van Jefferson. Uh, I think he came up big, not only for Wolford in the second half, I believe, that Cardinals game, but the Saints game, the first half of that Saints game, you know, for Matthew Stafford, catching some of those spot-up routes, you know, catching the the final play of the game for for Wolford, uh, and so I think he's going to come up big. I think he's heating up a little bit. I know we saw him on the uh, the hard knock special for the Arizona Cardinals. Him and his dad they had the conversation. I think he's going to be heating up uh, pretty much here on this this end. And to go to the defensive side, we don't really talk about the obvious um, the obvious players, but but Aaron Donald. I mean, I'm going to need him to step up big time this game. We don't we don't we don't talk about him cuz he's like the guaranteed X factor, but I think he's going to be the big X factor cuz the the thing that you talk about for the Rams defense talking about Yeast coming in for Taylor Rapp. Those guys going to need some help. Saints game last last week, those guys are in trouble. So Aaron Donald's going to have to come through, right? Big players make big plays during big games. And so this is Aaron Donald's game. And I think we're going to see him really show out and probably hopefully have one of the best games of his career or it's just this season. But we need to see it, I think, from Aaron Donald. And then going to the, to the Chiefs side, I'm going to go to the defensive side since we're on the defensive side for the Rams. Um, I'm going to go with Nick Bolton. I mean, my man versus the Chargers had quite a game. I believe had an interception, a, a forced fumble. And so the Rams have to circle him. When it comes to game breakers, I believe he's a game breaker uh, on that Chiefs defense. Um, and then on the offensive side, he said it, Pacheco. I mean, I think he's going to be someone that the Rams have to keep their eye out for because we talked about it, the Panthers game. Christian McCaffrey went off against the Rams. And so making sure that Andy Reid doesn't do some of those same things. Hey, we got Pacheco. Oh, let's get him out on the edge. Let's, let's have him do some oh, of the yeah. same things that Christian McCaffrey did. So I think Pacheco is going to be the game breaker for or the X factor for the Chiefs on the offensive side. I see. I, I knew it. I, I I knew you were going there. I mean, yeah. I was also going to go Justin Watson too. I got to show some. You know, I was okay. also, if you picked him, I would go Justin Watson because I see that I almost went uh, Justin Watson. Yeah. So I, I you know I see that uh, Patrick Mahomes is spotting him up a little bit more. Justin Watson's a, gr- a smart receiver. You know, looking for him in the end zone for deep routes, and so he could be a sneaky one. But I'm definitely going to go Pacheco. And and keep this in mind, Cam. MVS. Justin Watson, Juju, Sky Moore, those are all guys that can beat you over the top. Like the Chiefs knew what they were doing when they were building this this wide receiver room. Uh, Mecole Hardman, Kadarius Toney, all of these guys have the, the speed to beat you over the top. Justin Watson is somebody that could absolutely creep up on you if you're not paying attention. Um, you know, he's done that this year. And, and the thing about Mahomes, he is not like other quarterbacks in the league where uh, I mean, even like, you know, Tom Brady, we've talked about this. Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers won't throw to you if they don't trust you. Patrick Mahomes will throw to anybody 
You know, it's like he's very similar in the sense like Stafford will throw to anybody. I know lately with Cooper Cup, but I think that was more on McVay. Um, you know, Patrick Mahomes will literally throw to anybody that's wearing, you know, that Chiefs helmet. And, you know, that's either Pacheco, McKinnon, Michael Burton, Jody Fortson, uh, Noah Gray. I mean, it doesn't matter. You know, he that's the thing that makes him so dangerous is that, you know, we've seen games where they've won in blowouts and Travis Kelsey had three catches for 13 yards. Like your game plan was to take Kelsey out of it. And then he's like, all right, I'll get Juju Smith Schuster involved. Nine catches, 146 yards, two touchdowns. Try me. Then next game, everyone's like, oh, well, we can't let Juju beat us. And then, all right, Kelsey, uh, he's going to have a hat trick. There you go. It's like, all right, well, we can't have Kelsey and Juju beat us. So we have this awesome game plan. We're going to shut down both of them. All right, I'll throw to Pacheco and I'll run with Pacheco. Pacheco will have almost 200 total yards. There you go. All right, now we'll try to game plan for all of them. Justin Watson's beating you over the top. All right, now we got all of them. We got all of them on lock. (laughs) MVS is beating you over the top. And then that one game against the Niners, they like forgot Nicole Hardman existed. He had two touchdowns rushing the ball at, like near the goal line. I mean, this team and just the way Andy Reid has always been about, you know, with the offense, he never gets the appreciation uh, going back to like the Eagles. But I mean, don't forget, they had Mike Vick. They had Don McNabb. They had Brian Westbrook. They had guys like Deshaun Jackson, Jeremy Macklin. I mean, I feel like people kind of just forget that this is the same Andy Reid that had all those guys and made the most out of him. Made like uh, Jason Avant like a terror on third down because you knew he was going to just basically fit into that, you know, soft spot in the zone and he, he could take a hit. Hank Basket over the top. Like they had all those guys. I know I'm bringing up these names and people are like, Hey, I know that guy. Uh, but, you know, I mean, for real. So Andy Reid is going to have this team ready to go. He's going to have this offense ready to go. And it's in Kansas City. This is probably the worst place to play when you're not a good football team. Uh, right now, the Rams have to, you know, show some life. I mean, four and seven isn't the best, but it's definitely not the worst. And your your schedule, if you can beat the Chiefs, your schedule isn't any better than the Chiefs. I mean, Seattle yeah. could probably creep up on you because you got them twice. And, you know, Gino could rip apart your defense, you know, just with how quickly he gets rid of the ball. But aside from that, Cam, that's what what I'm looking at before we get into the, the predictions is that this team has a golden opportunity if they beat the Chiefs. And I'm not saying they're going to, but if they beat the Chiefs, they're, the rest of their schedule is like the Raiders, the Broncos, Seattle. You know, it's not the Chiefs, the Bills, the Vikings. The you know, Niners. <laughs> The Niners. So uh, anything can happen. Anything will happen in the NFL. And keep in mind, if the Rams beat the Chiefs, 10 and 7 is still possible. They had to win like six straight last year. So they've done it before. They have um, just a bevy of injuries. So no one is expecting that. But if anybody's going to do it, wouldn't it be Sean McVay? Like, wouldn't it be a a young rookie, uh, not rookie, but young running quarterback? Wouldn't it be an exciting young quarterback? I mean, this is what the NFL, the the Rams organization was built on. Because if you think about it, I mean, they only have two Super Bowls, one of which was won by a guy who was a backup plan. I mean, Kurt Warner was never supposed to play. It was supposed to be Trent Green. Trent Green gets hurt. Kurt Warner takes over and the greatest show on turf becomes a thing. So, I mean, I'm just saying, like, I'm not trying to give false hope, but if they do win this game somehow, there's definitely some leeway to to make it at least exciting towards the end of the year. Yeah. And what I'm hoping for at the very least, Cam, is they get a winning record or, or at least, you know, 500. I mean, that's what I'm hoping for. I think that's what obviously McVay is looking for. He wants to be in the playoffs, no doubt. But I think he wants to keep that streak of not having a losing season and, and just keep that, you know, exclusive to Kyle Shanahan over in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Shots. <laughs> Shots. Uh, <laughs> twice by the way uh so <laughs> we got the uh the predictions and cam where are we going with this one uh how do you see this game going yeah so really quick before we jump into the predictions i want to talk about this you know when it comes to andy Reid, i feel like it's more like a phil jackson type thing where you know yeah. you coach kobe you coach michael jordan you know you you coach your michael vick so you got your patrick mahomes and don McNabb. so You know, Andy Reid is no one to sleep on, and it's going to be the David versus Goliath type game where the Rams coaching staff are literally going to have to coach their best game to get to that even or that winning season towards the end of the season because it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And going against, going up against 
a team like this, Kansas City Chiefs, and a coach like Andy Reid, a Hall of Fame coach, and a Hall of Fame, you know, uh, uh, Patrick Mahomes and uh, Travis Kelsey, they're going to have to play their best ball. And so with saying that, I, I haven't gone against the Rams in any of these podcast, any of these podcasts. Um, and I won't, I won't start now. And so I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm going to go 27, 24 Rams. They get multiple turnovers against Patrick Mahomes. They shut down Travis Kelsey. They shut down a lot of the X factors that we talked about. They run the ball really well. They protect the ball really well. And they come with the dub. So I know I'm, I'm a big dreamer. I dream big each day, but that's going to be my prediction. 27, 24 Las Ramos. Let's go. Wow. Okay. So, so the chiefs are 15 and a half point betting favorites. I might <laughs> actually take the plus 15 and a half Rams because I'm going to go chiefs win this game. 34, 20. I can't, I'm sorry. I can't join you there. And you know me, I'm Mr. Optimist. I've literally picked the Rams. I pick the Rams all the time. I don't see how they win this game besides anything other than just, I, it just, it has to happen because it makes no sense. Um, I mean, I could see them absolutely winning this game because, like I said, it just it, it makes no sense. But also, like the Chiefs' offense is great; it's the best in the league. But if they have a bad day, it's like a bad shooting performance. I mean, like you know, my Kansas Jayhawks yesterday, basketball wise, they're playing Tennessee uh, in their little mini uh, tournament championship game. They forced twenty four turnovers on Kansas uh, on uh, Tennessee. In there this we go. Game. Uh, they forced twenty four turnovers on Tennessee. They lose by fifteen. Like they couldn't shoot. They, they shot like 32% <laughs> of the field. So, it, I mean, I do see what you're saying because, like, if, if Kansas City just can't shoot, or as in this case can't score, uh, just has a bad day where, like, Mahomes is missing throws and whatnot. Like, I mean, you're hoping for, like, an anomaly type of game for Mahomes, but it's certainly possible it's any given Sunday. Uh, and I could see if that's the case and the defense shows up and the defense has been really good more often than not this year. I think they're just really stretched out with how many plays that they've played mentally stressed out because they're doing, I mean, they know they should probably be a winning team right now. And the offense has kind of held them back. Uh, but then the offensive side, it's like if any time, if there was any time to start get like get going, it's now and with you know Bryce Perkins with a full week of preparation I saw how many people were like put in Bryce and then he finally gets his chance last week and everyone's like yeah Bryce ain't it I'm like how do we know he ain't it like for real like the guy didn't even play a full week of practice with with first team so this guy's never really had to prepare as a starter this week he has I mean let's see what he does with a full week of preparation against I you know I and mediocre at best defense that has some stars on I mean, like you said, you know, you talk about a Nick Bolton, a guy who I think they drafted either before or after Tutu Atwell. So that's something, um, you know, Nick Bolton, George Karloftis, the rookie, uh, you know, first round pick, uh, you know, Chris Jones. I mean, you always have to know where Chris Jones is at all times. Frank Clark, there are guys in this secondary, Legereus Need, I mentioned, um, you know, that could cause fits, but it's not a great defense. It's not. It, it, it's it's mediocre, maybe a little bit better than mediocre, but it's not a great defense. And so I definitely think there's there's a chance there, uh, you I know, agree. at least in my opinion. Um, you know, I don't see anything wrong with picking the Rams. I mean, you're going to get people in the comment section like, oh man, this dude's a Rams homer. Come on now. But I mean, come on. This is the team that just won the Super Bowl. Ugh. It's not the same team. It's very banged up. But it's still Sean McVay as the coach. It's still Raheem Morris, the defensive coordinator. I don't know. I, I can see it. I'm still sticking by 34, 20. I think the Rams will be competitive. Um, and I think the chiefs will kind of pull away in the second half. Like the Rams forget how to score in the, the second half. They do. Uh, so <laughs> they do all the time. So yeah. I'm just 34, 20. Uh, and I think if it's any consolation, the Rams cover the 50 and a half point spread. I'm not saying it's an obnoxious spread, but man, something just feels wrong. 15 and a half like do you understand how big that is in betting wise i mean the rams have never been that like in sean McVay's entire career they've never been that uh espn is our team rankings.com is projecting a 30 to 13.6 uh 30.0 to 13.6 game uh you know based on their you know numbers and everything they do i i, I tend to think they'll, they'll score at least 20 I just don't think that the Chiefs defense is very good. Uh, so I'll take 34-20. And this game doesn't get shut off. 
because it won't be a blowout. So that that there's another consolation prize. It won't get shut off. We don't get embarrassed in front of the national, uh, you know, the mainstream fans. Um, because the other games, uh, the Saints and the 49ers, and I guess, I don't know. That, I think that would have had just the same argument to be put on as this game. But they I, I know they, they shelled out the dough to get this game. I think it's Fox, right? They shelled yeah. out the dough to get this game before the season. And, man, they're sitting there, like, punching air. They're like, come on, this is supposed to be our marquee matchup. <laughs> now, we have the freaking uh, Super Bowl champions and the team. Like, we had the battle of the dynasties if this worked out the way we thought, you know, preseason. Because there's only three teams, Cam, that have won a Super Bowl in the last four years. Uh, and, and that's the Rams, Chiefs, and uh, Patriots. Uh, and there, there's only uh, three teams that have been in the Super Bowl twice in the last four years, is what I meant. Uh, and, yeah. there's, you know, there, and there's, I, 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 real quick, Jake, I want to go back to your point for the Rams to, to do well in this game. Um, yeah. <laughs> and go into my ridiculous my ridiculous call of the 20, uh, what does it say, 24-27 uh, Rams. Um, Bryce Perkins. Bryce Perkins challenged the discipline of those rookie defensive backs, right? Force them to have a bad day. And I think that's going to be really big um, for, for the Rams is forcing those d- rookie DBs to have a bad day. Running the ball, running the ball, going deep with Tutu Atwell, Allen Robinson, or whatever that looks like. And then also forcing turnovers and controlling the clock. Those are my three takeaways, three ways for the Rams to, to win this game. And it's going to be David versus Goliath. Uh, like you said, the, the, the people who, the football guys who wanted this game to be the one can get that if the Rams play well. But if not, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a blowout. It's gonna be a blowout. Uh, can you imagine if this was like like a neck and neck like shootout? There'd just be something about these two teams, man. Every time they get together, it just seems like it. So we'll see. Uh, the last time these two played, as we know, it was the Monday Night Football game in 2018, 54. 54- 51. We were robbed then of a rematch that would have been the Super Bowl, the Rams Chiefs, because, well, D Ford forgot that he was off sides. It was on the other side of the field. Tom Brady threw an interception on the exact opposite side of the field, but a, a penalty, I guess, is a penalty. Uh, and as we know that how that went down. But uh, both teams, you know, they are uh, they're among the, the league best. I mean, I know the Rams aren't great this year, but if you're looking at the scope of everything, how it's gone over the last five years, I mean, the Chiefs, they're, they're trying to be that dynasty that I thought the Rams could be. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But uh, that's going to do it for us. Appreciate you guys tuning into this. I know a lot of people aren't very excited to watch the team get blown out on national television. But over here, we don't think it's going to be much of a blowout. I mean, I think it's going to be competitive. I think the Chiefs pull away. That's not necessarily a blowout. In 34-20, I think any Rams fan would sign up for because that shows they actually put points on the board. Uh, I think any Rams fan, every Rams fan would sign up for Cam's prediction. So <laughs> yeah. uh, 27-24, sign me up. Uh, the over-under is 42. So I, I, don't, I don't know about that one. But... Uh, that's that's going to do it. So I'm Jake Allen Bogan. He's Cameron Lynch. Be sure to follow him at Cameron Lynch 50. Follow me at JK Bogan. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, rate, review, all that jazz. And uh, that's going to do it. You guys take care and we'll be back uh, to, you know, basically break down how the game went. Hopefully it's not an absolute <laughs> uh, bar, uh, a, a bloodbath. And hopefully it's uh, quite the uh, exciting little uh, thing. But that's yeah. it. You guys take care. Peace.